audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Foundations. You look at the four kinds of rain. You've got God sends the former rain, it prepares the earth. He sends the latter rain, and this is a stronger, more fierce rain. It gives a thorough soaking so the crop is going to yield a good harvest. And this is the process of our transformation and sanctification. Foundations. Understanding the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. With Robbo Robinson and Mandy Warby. In our last program, we learned about the former and the latter rain. And in this program, we're going to learn about the generic kind of rain that God sends to all men. And then the rain that is about the future, about trusting him for what we can't even see. We've looked at the Yore, the former rain, and we've looked at Malkosh, which is the latter rain. And now we'll look at the generic form of rain, which is Matar. And Matar is actually, it's a noun and a verb. It's pretty fascinating, but it's just Mm. this generic Falling of rain. And God talks about this in Deuteronomy chapter 11, where he says, The land into which you're entering to possess is not like the land of Egypt from which you came, where you used to sow your seed and water it with your foot like a vegetable garden. But the land into which you're about to cross to possess, a land of hills and valleys, drinks water from the rain of heaven, a land for which the Lord your God cares. The eyes of the Lord your God are always on it from the beginning to the end of the year. It shall come about if you listen obediently to my commandments, which I am commanding you today, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and all your soul, that he'll give the rain for your land in its season, the early and the late rain, that you may gather in your grain and your new wine and your oil. And again, you see, this is just like this generic promise of rain that God is going to send to his people because he's watching over this particular land. But you remember, he harkens back to, he says, it's not like Mm. being in Egypt where you've got a water source that you don't need to trust me for. In this land, it's the dew or the rain of heaven that has to water this land. You have to trust me for it. And they have to trust him for rain because it's the only way they're going to get water in their land. We mentioned this last time. You've got the Sea of Galilee, just a large lake. You've got uh, the Jordan River, which is fairly minuscule. Every other water source is undrinkable because it's salt, and the Dead Sea particularly salty. They had to trust God as the one who was going to water their land. We hear in Scripture that God talks about sending the rain on the evil and the good. Yeah. And so that's just, I guess, this generic form of rain that sort of just falls around the world at Various times. Yeah, yeah. So again, and this is how we recognize that God is a God who is good and he is not partial. He, he says that he's not partial. Yes, he has a chosen people. And yes, he has promised various different covenants and blessings for them. But God, God's heart is for all mankind. So yeah, he will spread his love, his generic word, his reign on all men because he's a good God. But then for certain things, for certain seasons, for certain reasons and purposes, God sends specific rain. And that's the same with his word. This, we've been learning that, that rain is very much a type or symbolic of God's word. Now, the next one, the next word that we're going to look at is Geshem. It's kind of an interesting word. It's still talking about water falling from heaven. Obviously, rain is rain. But the root word here means to cause rain or to send rain. It's it's very similar to the others, but Hosea is very specific in how he describes it. The word is actually Geshem in the Hebrew. And we see this word used in Hosea 6 verses 1 to 3. It says, Come, let's return to the Lord, for he has torn us, but he'll heal us. He has wounded us, but he'll bandage us. He'll revive us after two days. He'll raise us up on the third day that we may live before him. So let's know, let's press on to know the Lord. His going forth is as certain as the dawn, and he'll come to us like the rain, that's Geshem, like the spring rain, Malkosh, watering the earth. Yeah, so you've got the two uses of these different words. And the prophet here is pointing out that his people are quite distant, and he is wanting them to be put into a position of of discipline and hardship to teach them a lesson because of their rebellion but they're not in a good place yet. So if I was to paraphrase what the prophet was saying there, he was saying, look, come on, we need to get serious. We need to repent before God. Um, He's dealing with us as we deserve. But if we will just get our act together, if we will return to him in repentance, he's going to send the rain, the Geshem, the life-giving water that we don't currently have, that we're literally dying for. And then we'll get the spring rain, the Malkosh, 
and that will bring the harvest that we need for the future. So this that's basically what mm. the prophet is saying. Geshem is kind of like a calling forth. It is a faith position of belief and trust, and it's faith and trust in something that you can't actually see yet. Mm. It's not quite attainable, but it will be. And it's about trusting that God is going to fulfill his promises. Now, I want to be very careful here because I'm not talking about hyper faith. Mm. I'm not talking about the imaginations of our own heart and we're going to call forth this, that and the other. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the faithful promises of God for his people when they submit to him. The Apostle Paul gave some great examples of this type of faith. And particularly Abraham is a good example of it. And Paul talks about him in Romans 4.17. Paul says, as it is written, a father of many nations have I made you in the presence of him whom he believed, even God, who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which doesn't exist. We can actually get a little bit confused. It's to call into being that which doesn't exist. Again, that which didn't exist at the time, according to what God had promised. Mm. Abraham wasn't making up something for himself. It wasn't his own idea. He was putting his faith in something that was in and of itself unattainable for him, but trusting that God was going to bring it to pass. God promised it to him. Yes. And then God confirmed his promise. And then it happened because Abraham believed God. Exactly. And remember, I mean, he's a remarkable man. And even though Sarah kind of had her failings, you had Abraham who was 100 years old. He had one foot in the grave. Sarah was already a barren woman. She's Mm. pretty shriveled up and towards the end. And they're having to believe God for one child. And yet here's Abraham. Yes, a father of many nations. That's extraordinary faith. And they didn't have anything in sight, nothing to put their eyes on. You know, our faith is kind of like a muscle. And it's not going to actually get stronger unless you use it. In fact, if you don't use it, it's just going to be pretty flabby and useless. So faith is very much like a muscle. And that is what... This particular word is about. So if you look at the four kinds of rain, you've got God sends the former rain, it prepares the earth, begins the germination of the seed, which is what it does to our heart. Then he sends the latter rain, and this is a stronger, more fierce rain. It gives a thorough soaking so the crop is going to yield a good harvest. And this is the process of our transformation, our sanctification. We're becoming stronger as we grow, we're being nourished, and we, we're starting to become the people that God wants us to be. You have a generic kind of a rain, the consistent daily norm, Mm. this incredible provision that God sends to everybody that demonstrates his goodness. It's all and if you're looking at the word, I mean the word has gone out around the world. That's the kindness and that's the mercy of God. Not everybody responds to it, but everybody has it in one way, shape or another. Then of course you have this exercise of faith where we're believing for God's promises for the future, that we can't see it yet, but God's promise is absolutely sure. Even like a farmer, he can he knows the seed is under the ground, he's watered it, the sun is out, and he knows something is happening. He knows the harvest is coming, even if he hasn't got his eyes on that beady little plant yeah, just yet. That's so true. It is all about faith, and of course the Bible tells us that our faith pleases God. Hebrews eleven six says, Without faith, it's impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. And then also in James 5, it says, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious produce of the soil, being patient about it, until it gets the early and late rains. You too, be patient, strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Isn't that wonderful? There's the former and the latter rains again. Mm. God is going to do what he's going to do. He's committed to us and our relationship with him. He's committed to our faith and he's committed to holding us until we take our last breath and we step into eternity with him. In the meantime, when we can't see everything the way we think it should be, like James says there, have patience and trust that the Lord is near and he'll do what he's promised. We look forward to joining you again next time for Foundations. And if you want to suggest a topic that we could study on Foundations, I'm sure Mandy would love to research something for you. So you can get in touch with us via the website vision.org.au slash foundations. This has been Foundations, a look at the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. For study notes, resources and more, see vision.org.au slash foundations. 
Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.